Hey everyone, today I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series number 75, Jolt from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. First, of course, taking a look at the packaging. As you can see, there's an open window that displays the figures and all the accessories. <clears throat> Got a nice image of Jolt right there. It says he's number 75, Studio Series Autobot Jolt. It says Transformers Revenge of the Fallen right there. Transformers on the side. On this side, you got a, another image of Jolt right there. On the other side, you have a close-up image on his face. And on the back, you have some product shots of him in his robo mode and his vehicle mode. Oh, wow. It's been a while since I said that. And you got, and you transform the 23 steps. And you got bios and other stuff and other things. Yes, just hurry up and get this guy open because I am excited to be messing with another Transformer. First, taking a look at his accessories. He comes with two of these electric hook things which is just molded in gray plastic but there's some detail there and it can plug on to the figure just unplug this uh thing right here and then you plug this in and there you go we have jolt with his electric hooks i think that's pretty cool that they that they um gave us those accessories and taking a look at Jolt here, I think this guy is really, really awesome. The uh, reviewing a Transformer, Transformer again is really amazing because because it reminds me of how detailed these uh, things are. Taking a look at the head sculpt, it looks really, really good. I mean, I guess it could use some more paint on here, but for what paint is on here, it looks really nice. It got the blue eyes right there. And some silver right there on the mouth. And you got blue right here on the top of the head. And then uh, going down to the arms right here. You just got some uh, car parts right there. And then for arms, there's some more sculpted in detail. And then some silver right there on the forearm. Unfortunately, on mine, this uh, elbow joint is super loose. So it just doesn't want to... Okay, now it want... Okay, there you go doesn't want to stay at all so that's unfortunate but looking at the chest it looks really nicely detailed i love all the silver right here on these sculpted in details it looks really nice there's some silver under the armpit right here and then there's some more of that detail going across here there's actually clear plastic right here on the crotch area and there's some silver going along here on the thighs with some more of that clear plastic. And you got some tire detail right here. Some more of that nice, nicely sculpted in detail right there. I may need to get a screw cover for this right here because that looks kind of awkward being that giant hole right there. And then it's just covered on this side. So that's kind of unfortunate. But you got some more of that silver right here on the ankles and then the feet, I guess, look nice. But it kind of it doesn't have any ankle pivot, so it's kind of weird for him to stand. But he stands up pretty nicely. It's just that the feet don't sit flat. If you want, the, want him to sit flat, he looks kind of weird doing that. And also, he doesn't want to stand up like that either. So you're going to have to have the feet spreading out wider than that. Oh, now he doesn't want to stand now. Great. Here we go. Yeah, so overall, it looks like a really nice figure on the back. It's just a bunch of clear plastic, and you guys know... You guys know how I feel about clear plastic. But we'll get into that when we get into that. It's kind of unfortunate that these things are right here because it kind of gets in the way of articulation. So that's kind of unfortunate for me. But, uh, yes, get into some size comparisons. Here we is next to some Dark and the Moon characters. We got Scrap Metal and Megatron right here. I think that this is a good size right here. Voyager class, bigger than Jolt. The Deluxe the class. Scrap Metal, I, I think, may be bigger than Jolt in the movie. Not really sure, because I haven't really seen them to, uh, next to each other. But, uh, from this, si from this size comparison, I think it's pretty nice. Here we is next to the RC Twins. I have Chromio right here, just leaning this way a bit because if i had it straight this thing will weigh her down and she'll fall over so i have to have her like that also this is not really a flat surface that much is kind of rough but i think this is a really good size right here yeah here's joe compared next to bumblebee and mirage now this is a great comparison right here three deluxe figures 
three good characters all next to each other. Amazing. And here he is next to the glorious Jetfire. This is <laughs> really amazing. Jetfire towers over Jolt, which is absolutely correct. He should tower over Jolt, and this is just awesome. You may be asking, where is my Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime? I unfortunately don't have a Michael Bay movie Optimus Prime. I have a Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime, but that's basically the closest you're going to get. Just seeing how he compares next to a Marvel Legend. Uh, here's Arcade. He's the only Marvel Legend I have in my display that's actually standing up in a straight pose. And here it is next to the original, or what's left of the original, Dark of the Moon Jolt. And yeah, I kind of wish I had this figure still complete, honestly, because I would pair, because I would put these right next to each other. Actually, no, this would go on the Dark of the Moon shelf if it was, if it was still together. And of course, here he is next to Masterpiece Jazz. That was a really long comparison. His guitar articulation, there's a ball joint at the head that allows him to look up that far. Can, can't look down at all because the chest gets in the way. There is some head tilt right there, rotation. Arm is on a ball joint and a hinge right there, so you get a slight butterfly. Arm can go up to about there, can rotate around. You can't rotate around 360 because these car parts get in the way. There's a bicep rotation. Single jointed bend at the elbow goes really past 90. Hinge at the at the wrist. There is a there is a somewhat of an ab crunch due to transformation, so you can crunch actually all the way to right there, which is very unnecessary. There is a waist rotation, ball joint at the hip can go up that much, go back that much, go out to about right there, and there is a slight rotation on that as well. Knee bend can bend to about right there. There is a rotation on this ankle right here, or shin, whatever you call that. And there's a hinge right here on the foot. So, overall, articulation on this figure, not the greatest. Not the greatest articulation points, but I can't... Can you stand up, Joe, for fuck's sake? Jesus Christ. But I guess some people can make it work. Of course, we're in the never-ending saga of me forgetting to mention the figure at the beginning of the video. Jolt stands at about four and a half inches tall to the top of his head. And of course, there's everyone's favorite part, the transformation, watching you fiddle around with a toy. So starting with transformation first, what you want to do is fold these parts out and then clip them on right there. They basically just sit there. They don't really clip. They just sit right there. Then hinge this up, untab this, and be very careful because that is clear plastic. Then hook it on. So about right there, let me put the camera up more. All right there, then fold these down so then you can get this on here and then that clips on to that. And you got right there, a lot of clear plastic. You guys know I don't know about how I feel about clear plastic. Mirage had it and I basically hated that this guy had a bunch of clear plastic. And Bumblebee had it as well on the door wings, and that broke. Moving on, you want to flatten that part out. Rotate that around, that will tab into there. And then hinge it. Oh, it's raining. You hear that? It's raining. Tab that in like so. And then hinge that up right there. And then put the hand right there. Then you're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. I can get it to do it. Hold on. Gonna have to go off camera for this. Okay, and then, yeah, wedge that into there. And then, as you can see, there is a stress mark right there because I hate it when Hasbro does this when the hooks have to go in between each other because it is very, very difficult to do that. Just trying to tab it in. This. Ah, there we go. Got it. Then you want to hinge this up right here, unfold that, rotate that around like so. Do the same thing on the other side. And as you see, some pieces are uh, hitting each other because it's not that much clearance. Fold these wheels out, hinge them. And I'm going to have to do this off camera again because it's kind of hard to do this on camera. 
you want to tab that in to right there and then that tabs in right there do the same thing on the other side okay yeah i'm gonna have to do this off camera i'll be right back all right so let me give you a rundown of what i just did i tabbed in the feet and i tabbed in this section in here and that section in there because it's really hard to do it in this position and then this whole top part basically just goes down and tabs into a bunch of, of ports like right there and then right there that tabs into there same thing on the side just get that to tab in ah, there we go. yeah so the transformation can be quite frustrating at some times but and we have them in the vehicle mode and just for some size comparisons make it quick and easy here is mirage which actually took me a while to transform mirage because shit it actually took me a while to transform mirage because i actually forgot how to do it Taking a look at the details on this car mode, I think it is really nice. I love the silver right here for the Chevy logo, some more silver right here across here for the grill parts. The headlights are done in silver. These headlights are done in silver. This grill part is done in silver. The wind, uh, the rear view mirrors are done in silver. The rims on the tires are done in silver as well, and it does roll. Well, of course, not well on this. This is a rough surface. There is some sculpted detail around the door area. It's got the black right here for the for the edges of the windows. And just a bunch of went clear plastic here. Just a bunch of it. Got some silver right here for the back of the tires. Some silver right here. Well, actually, no, that's just detail from the robot mode, which kind of sticks out there. But overall, it kind of hides up pretty well. Some silver right there for the... Um, for the Chevy logo, some red right there for the head for the tail lights. So it, overall, it's just a really, really good looking vehicle mode. And looking at the bottom, I guess that can pass as the underside of a car. But yeah, really, really good looking vehicle mode. There's not really much else I can say about the vehicle mode besides that it looks good. Oh, I forgot one size comparison. Here it is next to, of course, Masterpiece Jazz. Oh, I forgot to give the line. Yes, get him back in the drum mode and give him a score. So overall, this is a really good figure in my opinion. The details, the sculpting is nice. I love it. The articulation is pretty limited in what you can do because the transformers sometimes limitations. There's sometimes limitations because all the parts you have. Uh, getting him to stand up is kind of frustrating. You have to fiddle with it a bit to get him to stand up straight. Uh, because his feet aren't really flat on the ground and I can't really especially on this type of material that I have on my review stand station right here it can be difficult the um the transformation can sometimes be difficult because all the tabs that you have to put into each other so yeah it can be frustrating a bit and I do have him in this like kind of kind of badass pose but kind of shit looking pose at the same time but it's still a good figure in my opinion. So overall, I would give this guy, uh, I want to give it a 7 or 8 out of 10, but then my brain won't let me. It wants me to give it a 9 out of 10. But, I'm, oh God, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. That um, I really want to give it like a 9 or a 10. But uh, for all the stuff I named out, yeah, it deserves an 8, which is still good though. But anyway, that's it for this review. I'll see you next time. Bye.